All right, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. Today, we're gonna to take your arch nemesis, the B string, and make it your main point of navigation. The idea behind this video is to stop getting you or any player from really just thinking about the thick E string as the focal point to your the, to the start of your chords, to the start of your solos. I, I, I teach hundreds of lessons a month, and I know how hard it is to get your mind off of starting here for an A and then starting here for a G or, or rooting mentally there. And so I want to give you guys the freedom to really have a second option that's just as powerful, just as easy for you to see, so that when you want to take a solo, instead of coming in on the low end, you can come in on the high end, right? And so how do we do that? Well, what we got to do is you got to study what is the B string. The B string being the arch nemesis of every guitar player because of the way it's tuned on guitar. It's tuned a half step down, and it makes our scales all funky and weird. And I just want to say, this lesson was brought to us on Stitch Method by my good friend, student, Dwayne. Happy birthday, Dwayne. Uh, he had this discovery, and I, I said, hey, I'm going to bring this to the masses. So if you do enjoy this, uh, let Dwayne know that he did a good job and wish him a happy birthday. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start on the simplest like method possible on the B string. Now, if you're a medium advanced player, you're probably going to roll your eyes and I apologize, but I want to start from the ground up. I think it's that important. The B string, second string from the thinnest, okay? If I yeah, I actually I thought I plugged my G string for a second. Uh, the B string. There it is. Now, there are notes on this B string, and so what are they? The open is a B note. And you got to know this. Now, by the way, I do have a chart linked below that has everything I talked about in a very clear fashion so that you can visualize it if you're a visual learner. All right, so now, open B strings B. First fret is a C. Second fret is a C sharp. Third fret is a D. Fourth fret, D sharp or E flat. Fifth fret, E. Sixth fret, F. Seventh fret, F sharp or G flat. Uh, eighth fret, G. Ninth fret, G sharp or A flat. Tenth fret, uh, A. 11th fret, A sharp or B flat, and 12th fret, B, and it repeats, the 13th fret would be a C, C sharp, D, and so on. So right when you get to that 12th fret, the guitar repeats, okay? So those are the notes on the B string, and once you get to 12, it starts to repeat itself. B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, just in case you're brand new to Stitch Method or guitar. That's for you. Now, what do we do with this information? Well, you know, when you need an A minor pentatonic, I know that most of us, me included, you know, you spot that A on the E string and say, well, there's my form one, there I go, right? And we usually come in here, and you don't want to come in here. Your solos, you don't want to start on the lowest note. You just don't want to do it because most guitar solos don't start there. You want to be able to kind of come in, you know, on the higher notes. And so how do we do that? Well, we got to realize that the B string has notes on it, and any note can become a root note of several things. It can become a root note of a chord, it can become the root note of a pentatonic, and it can become a root note of a diatonic scale, meaning a full scale, like major or minor. So I want to show you how to find these with ease, and then show you how to, like, you know, really navigate so that you can come in on any one of these ideas and stop getting away from that E string. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm gonna pick G, okay? So where is a G? Well, I know that a G is on the eighth fret of this B string. Now, if I need a G major chord, I mean, sometimes you're gonna go right for this. I get it, but why wouldn't you go for this? And the question is, if you don't go for that, it's because you don't see it. Well, let's talk about it. This root note G can be a major root note of a major chord. Now that uh, shape chord in the cage chord system is a C shape chord here. There's my middle finger, it's on a G, there's my C shape. My cage chord stuff will be linked below if you haven't seen that stuff before because you want to know this. Now there is another root note here in the pinky, but we're not navigating with that, we are navigating with our middle finger. So if you need a major chord, you can just take your middle finger, slide to whatever note you want, that's the note, play your C shape chord around it as long as your middle finger is on that note and you will get that major chord. This is a G, means this is a G major chord. If I go to the 5th fret, this is an E, I can play an E major chord. If I go to the 12th fret, that's a B, I can play a B major chord. So when you, if you know some songs that have chord progressions with major chords, try and spot those notes on the B string, all right? Now, minor chords. Minor chords are a little bit different and they're a little bit harder, but if we go to that G again, where this was the major shape, the minor shape plays a little bit differently. You want to put your ring finger on the note. And so now you're scouring your own, okay, uh, G, I got my, I need a G minor chord. So I'm putting my ring finger there. And you play eighth fret of the um, uh, B string, seventh fret G, eighth fret of the D. And if you can get your pinky into the 10th fret 
of the A string. That's good. If you can't, you can just play this guy. But if you can get this guy here, excuse me, that's good as well. And so this is your minor chord shape. It's known as a C minor shaped chord. So this is a G minor. This is an E minor. This is a B minor. Now I'll test you right now at home. How about you play an A minor? Find the A on the B string. Okay, did you find the 10th fret? If you found the 10th fret, you put your ring finger there and you play this little chord, 10, 9, 10. If you can get your pinky there, great. If you can't, that's your A minor chord. So let me show you something. Let me play a chord progression for you. It's gonna be A, uh, sorry, A, C, um, D, G, or G, D. Yeah, so let me show you A, C, G, D, A, C, G, D, and then A, E minor, G, D, okay? So let me show you this, A, middle finger, major. C, I can come up here, that's my C, 13th fret. G, 8th fret. D, I can go to the 3rd fret. Oh, really, Ian? My god, you know, if I, could, if I can play guitar once correctly on the video, there's my D chord. Cut me some slack, though, I'm tired. All right, so I have A, C, G, D, correctly. Now A, E minor. Well, there's my E on the fifth fret. Ring finger for minor. G, D. Let's play it together. Okay, so you can pause that and rewind that if you need to. All right, but we're just doing with C, C major shape chords and C minor shape chords, but we're moving them. Let's start with A. A, 10th fret middle finger. C, 13th fret middle finger. G, 8th fret middle finger. And then D, um, middle finger, 3rd fret. Now, if you can't use your pinky, it's okay. Just pick it up and, you know, strum from that ring finger. And then starts again, A, 10th fret, E minor. Okay, minor shape, 5th fret, G, back to your C shape, 8th fret, and then D. All right, and so there, there are your major minor chords rooted on the B string. Now, there's another set of major minor chords, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'll talk about that later. All right, so now let's focus on pentatonic. Say you just want to rip in a pentatonic. We'll start with a major pentatonic because we played a major chord. Well, guess what? Same root note, same string, same everything. So let's say I need a G major pentatonic. Well, I'll put my middle finger on the eighth fret of that B string, that's a G. Now that's the root note of my chord, it's also the root note of my pentatonic. The pentatonic shape that you wanna associate with the B string root note is a form four pentatonic. Um, I'll have a video link below in case you don't know your boxes, but I'm gonna show this to you. I'm gonna start it from thickest to thinnest to show you the box, but we're gonna talk about that note being the root note. If I'm on the eighth fret of the B, the form four pentatonic is seven, 10, seven, 10, seven, nine, seven, nine, eight, 10, seven, 10. That's it. But guess what? That's the root note. Why not come in on that root note? Why, if you need a G major pentatonic, are you gonna go down here and solo off that thick? We don't really do that. We come in on the high. So I think I have a G major, like little pulsing backing track. And now I have this, I'm gonna start the G major backing track on my looper, and I'm just gonna come in on that G note in the form four. Right. You can see I had the G major pentatonic, that was my root note, the shape is the form four, it never changes if I needed a D major pentatonic, well the form four would be two, five, two, five, two, four, two, four, three, five, two, five. At the start, yeah, two, five. And again, I have a chart that has all of this right there in case you need it. All right, minor pentatonic, getting deeper. The minor pentatonic plays differently. In this case, with minor pentatonic, you wanna, you wanna know where the root note is if we put the G here on the eighth fret, but you wanna use your first finger. Now this is the form three pentatonic. It comes off this root note, so you're gonna have eight, 11, 8, 10, excuse me. And so, this should feel familiar if you have seen my Never Lost Pentatonic video because you're coming right in on what I call the central hub. And then once you find that, you can kind of connect it and kind of keep going out of it. But let's, let me show you that. Your first finger for the minor pentatonic, form three, eight, 11, eight, 10, backwards, 10, eight, 11, eight, 10, seven, 10, eight, 10. Oh, sorry, and then eight, 10, eight. 
okay? And that's your form three. So if I need the G minor pentatonic, I play this backing track, I'm gonna play it, and then let's say I, I know I can put a G minor pentatonic on it and get some rock sound, and I need a G minor, so I'm gonna find with my eyes, okay, there's my G in the B string, eighth fret, but I'm coming in with my first finger and I'm gonna play, I'll turn a little bit of distortion, a little bit, and I'll get um, my G minor pentatonic. <laughs> Very simple stuff, but I found my G minor pentatonic on the B string. All right, so let's just say, turn my distortion off, um, I have my major pentatonic form four with the middle finger, I have my form three right here, root note uh, for the minor, and let's just say I needed, I don't know, a B, a B major pentatonic, okay? B major pentatonic, both the chord and the pentatonic use your middle finger, and you're gonna put it on the 12th fret, and I'll have my chord here or I'll have my major form four pentatonic. All right, if I need a minor, I put my first finger there and I have my minor form three. All right, and so we're navigating with our B string. But wait, it gets better. Full scales, well guess what? You're already focusing so much on the B string. Why not give you the full scales, a full major scale and a full minor scale known as diatonics. Okay, so quite simple. Uh, we're gonna focus on the G again. We'll move it around, boom, there's a G, all right? And so if I need the full scale, now I'm gonna go by fret number. Again, the chart has it. You might know the shape, you might not. If you need to chart it out yourself, when I say this, this is fine. I'm just gonna do fret numbers, but here is my root note, okay? And for major, again, your middle finger goes there, okay? All major everything, chords, pentatonics, and diatonics, you put your middle finger on that root note. Now, I'm gonna show you from the thickest string again, the chord frets, okay? Um, but know that this is a root note here. So you have seven, eight, 10, seven, nine, 10, seven, nine, 10, seven, nine, seven, eight, 10, seven, eight, 10. And that's your scale shape. So if I need a full G major scale, like a really colorful G major scale, um, instead of playing the pentatonic, I'll play this full scale shape or diatonic scale shape, and it instantly gives me a G major scale because I'm rooting on the B string, and I have my root note, and you get a sound like this. Just dancing around, having fun. Now, if I need a G minor scale, this is the last one, it's the hardest one. Again, I have a chart, or if you wanna write it down. Now, minor, for the pentatonic and the um, full scale diatonic, you wanna think first finger. For the chord, you wanna think ring finger. It's the minors that mess it up, I get it. But index finger, and I'm gonna show you the full scale shape starting from the thickest string so you can have it, but again, that's the root note we're focusing on. So the scale shape, full minor, I read off the wrong frets like I usually do in stitch method fashion, so let me just do it correctly. Here we go. So your root note is here on the eighth fret. I'm gonna start here on the uh, E string so I give you the whole shape. Here we go, the frets, and I'll go slow, write it down, or there's a chart. Here we go, eight, 10, 11, eight, 10, seven, eight, 10, seven, eight, 10, eight, 10, 11, eight, 10, 11, and guess what? That's your root note. So now let's say I need a full minor scale. Okay, here we go. Okay, there it is. So now you have a major and a minor chord, a major and a minor pentatonic, a major and a minor scale. So what do you do with this? Well, you practice all those and then you try putting all pieces together. Now, I'm gonna keep this in G, you can move this anywhere, but let's just keep that G back in track and let me show you how, if I needed major, I would see my chord, I would play some arpeggios, um, I would also play some pentatonic, coming in looking for that B string note, and then if I needed some full diatonic, I will play it, so check this out.
So that was a mixture of my chord tones, my pentatonics, and my diatonics. I can do the same thing for minor. Let's check it out. So G minor, I have my chord here. I have my pentatonic form three that goes with it. And I have my full diatonic. Let's see. so and so and I can just keep on playing and so here we go now I hope you enjoyed this I hope that it's bringing you a new confidence to navigate I hope I didn't move too fast if I did you can rewind or hit the slow button but I'll tell you this I have a new patreon channel and the reason I have it is because I want well I know how hard it is to practice um, and wonder if you are practicing the right thing. So I have a new Patreon channel with a tier called Practice uh, Practice Sessions with Stitch, but I'm going to change it to Practice Sessions and Bonus Lessons because uh, right when I'm done with this video, I'm going to uh, film three to five different videos about how I would practice what I just showed you and with also how to learn what I just did with a new set of chords and scales and everything on the same root note. What we did in this lesson is learned um, uh, chords and scales that came off this way on the B string and on my Patreon channel I have the whole set that goes this way the chords the scales the pentatonics so if you need help practicing if you like stitch method and you want to support the channel uh, I have about a dozen or so videos right now I'm adding a ton every month um, and uh, that's pretty much it so if you want to practice with me learn some new ideas and just be guided into a confident mindset you can check out my Patreon page, link below. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.